Hi everyone, my name is Selvin. Um, I am originally from Fiji, I'm Indo-Fijian. Um, I was born and grew up um, in Lotoka and I currently reside in Sydney. I'm speaking uh, today from Sydney. Um, I live on Gadigal land and so I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional um, custodians of the land that I'm on um, today. Um, I'm a writer and an illustrator, and uh, today I'm going to be reading my book, which is called Fiji Bath. Um, I've actually written two books. Um, I'm going to share the other uh, book's cover here as well. This is called Fiji Bath, Nana Comes to Sydney. Um, I've done the illustrations, but the cover is done by a wonderful artist from Fiji whose name is Ellen Stevens. Um, so the story of the book is uh, about a young boy who um, travels to Fiji from Sydney. Um, and he feels that he cannot communicate with his grandfather because he can't speak Fiji Hindi, but his grandfather has knowledge of English, uh, which the grandson doesn't know of. So when he arrives in Fiji, he then finally begins talking to his grandfather and then they begin a relationship um, through which the young boy starts to learn to speak Fiji Hindi and he understands his identity better. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and actually read the book. Um, so Fiji Bath, um, last Christmas, my mom took me to my grandfather's home in Fiji. My dad was going to be working all through the holidays that year. He said that mom and I should go by ourselves. My parents are doctors. They met at university and got married. My dad is white Australian. His family lives in the Blue Mountains, which is a two hour drive from our house in Sydney. My mom's family is Indo-Fijian and my dad's family is Scottish. So as you can see in the, in the illustration, the boy, his mom is Indo-Fijian and he's got a, an Anglo-Saxon dad. I call my grandfather Nana. He stays with my mom's brother and sister-in-law who live on a farm in Reki Reki. I call them my mama and mommy. Before we got to Fiji, I had never really talked to Nana. Mom would sometimes give me the phone Mom would sometimes give me the phone to say hello. I would say hi and quickly run to my room. I could only speak English and could not speak my Nana's language. So you can see the mom hands over the phone and he's running away. And this is something that a lot of um, young people go through. At the spice shops in Sydney, mom would sometimes bump into other women who knew who she knew from Fiji. They would smile and talk. Sometimes they would ask me, you know Fiji Bath? Mom would look at me and ask, can you say namaskaram to auntie? Namaskaram auntie, I would say. They would giggle and reply, namaskaram, you're so cute. Then they would squeeze my cheeks. I didn't like that when I was, uh, when I was younger. Now I'm eight years old and I still don't like it. When we landed in Fiji, I realized that the airport was a lot smaller than the one in Sydney. As we got out of the plane, we saw people singing songs to greet us. It felt really nice. I took a photo of them on my iPad. They smiled and loudly said, It's a wonderful sight and I was inspired by this because as you land um, you know, at Nandi Airport, you can see the hills in the background. Mama and Mommy came and picked us up from the airport. The drive to Rakiraki Raki was about as long as going to the Blue Mountains. I looked out the window as we went up the hill. It was so different from back home. I could see a few islands in the distance looking like green blue ships. The hills and cows had goats in the green grass. Women and little children sat at tables on the roadside selling pineapples. So that's a very common sight when you go to Fiji. Nana was waiting for us on the front porch. He was an old man with gray hair. I hugged him and kept quiet when he talked to mom. I was very shy and didn't know what to say to him. See, Nana is waiting. And I've done a little uh, few things here. You see the curtains, they are, these are very typical of um, you know, a home in Fiji where you use bangles to, um, um, to you know, um, yeah, to like, yeah, have the curtains like that. The next day I was sitting on the porch when Nana came and sat next to me. What are you doing? He asked. I'm playing Minecraft, I said softly. Is this like a computer? Nana asked, pointing at the iPad. Yes, kind of. 
I felt a little bad because all this time I thought that Nana could not speak English. I have an email address. Email my school friends that live overseas, but our computer is broken, said Nana. I do that sometimes, but we don't email as much. We can just chat on Minecraft, I told him. See, I held up the, I held up the iPad and showed him. Can you send emails on this iPad, Nana asked. Yes, I'll show you how, I said. I showed Nana and gave him my email address. We talked about lots of things. Nana told me how his grandparents came from Madras in India to work on the sugarcane plantations. Then he taught me a few words in Fiji Bath. He said, Aapke se hai means how are you? Ham teek hai means I am fine. I really enjoyed listening to Nana's stories and learning more words. That night, I asked my mom if we could give Nana my iPad so he can email his friends. She smiled and said yes. In a few days, we said goodbye to Nana to go back to Australia. I was sad I was going to miss him. Back in Sydney, I opened my email. Nana had written to me. It said, hi, hope the trip was good. Take care, love Nana. I replied, Namaskaram Nana, kaise hai, aap kaise hai, hum theek hai, we got home safe. It was nice to see you in Fiji, hope to see you soon, I miss you. Nana and I email each other every week now. He even sends me pictures of names of different things. I've learned a lot more since my last trip to Fiji in Christmas. Oh, I've learned a lot more since my last trip to Fiji last Christmas. I hope one day I can say that English isn't my only language because by then I'll also know Fiji Bath. And towards the end of the book, I've talked about what Fiji Bath is. I've talked about um, the Girimit period. I've talked about how um, Indians were brought from India to Fiji to work on sugarcane plantations. Um, and that's the, the little book that I have. Um, I'll quickly just share why I wrote this book. Um, a lot of us, you know, um, have academic conversations around um, the Indo-Fijian identity and about Girmit and its um, history. But when it comes to conversations with children, um, I've, I felt that, you know, why not start a conversation where children are young? And so that's why I wrote the book. And that's why, um, that's why I call it Fiji Bart, because Fiji Bart speaks to the, um, the identity of, um, of Indo-Fijians, which is, um, you know, we speak a different um, a language. Um, our language has its own identity and our people have their own identity. Um, the other thing is that through research, um, you know, we've, we've, we're able to understand now more that young people are able to connect with their identity um, as they grow older. Um, so, you know, a lot of times children feel that they haven't learned their language and that is completely fine. But um, I think for parents to be able to have that conversation, um, a book like this is important and really, really important for me was to see um, representation. Um, I've grown up uh, in Fiji and I've always read books that were from the US, that were from the UK. And I never, you know, really read uh, a mainstream book that uh, talked about the Indo-Fijian identity. So as we are a minority um, population, um, I felt the need um, and I felt that it was really important to um, have a book like this to um, have children uh, be able to have conversations uh, about their identity. Um, yeah, so that's um, my book. Thank you for allowing me to um, talk about Fiji Bath. And I wish everyone uh, the best in the rest of the, uh, the conference. Thank you.